Howdy, Howdy do, do, kind folks. <laughs> What's Slam and skits. Back, Back together here. again. Mm. Yeah. It's a reference to a Soldier Boy Tillin song. That's good. Is yeah. That is one. How you doing today, son? You doing all right? Pretty tired. Uh, I think I slept for two or three hours last night for some reason, but uh, mm, otherwise, one, not bad. The ones, the ones getting to you. <laughs> ah, son, son, yeah. son, 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 son. You all right, son? You all right, son? Did you? Did, did you eat? Did you eat, son? Do you yes. No, do you see? Dinner at this time. You got to eat your fourth, your fourth five course meal at this time, son. My ass. Oh, yeah. Nothing like a being. Oh, this is going to be very corny, but being a guy in a family, you know? Oh, yes. Speaking of family guy. Exactly. <laughs> Look, uh, there's a family guy. Shaking it up, up. So, yeah, we decided that this podcast is going to dive into the history and lore, if you will, of Family Guy. Which, yeah. surprising enough, there's a lot. There is. And yet, shots. oh, yet little. So, yep. what's the story... Of Family Guy. Son, well, first, son, how did you come across Family Guy and what is your overall thoughts on it? It's amazing. Uh, probably one of the few shows I will watch willingly uh, that is fictional. <laughs> and I quote it a lot, I find, which isn't always uh, appropriate. Uh, that's, that's where Dennis comes from. That is part of the fun, yes. And uh, Patty Tanger, the caddy manager. Patty T and Dennis and friends. Uh, <laughs> uh, we got a uh, freaking uh, Dan Rather with the seven shot of shoulders. Uh, that that's Family Guy. Uh, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of good stuff from Family Guy, I tell you. I found out about it when I was, I guess my first memory of it was as a kid in Blockbuster, <laughs> seeing some of the DVD box sets, and I knew I wasn't old enough to watch it. <laughs> that mm. was my introduction. I so. see. <clears throat> My introduction to Family Guy was flipping through the channels one day and coming across the Stewie saying, Mom, 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 Mummy, 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 Ma, Ma, Ma meme on oh. TBS. They were advertising their uh, Family Guy slots if you will back in the day of cable i think i remember that that's my first memory of family guy and ever since then i kind of knew what it was but i was like eh not really my thing and then high school sat down and watched a few episodes and turns out yeah it's it's hilarious it really is some instances, there's some that are, uh... Meh. Not bad, though. We'll, 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 we'll get into it. So, what's... What is Family Guy? Son, what is your interpret... What is your interpretation of the history of Family Guy? That's a good question. You, you don't know, do you? I mean, I... I guess I do. It's... I'm not sure how to word it. I guess you could say hmm, it started with this uh, like pilot ish uh, test did. of 
was it Life with Larry? Was that the name of it? Yes. And okay, so I'll take okay. the reins of okay. this. You you can explain it way better for, for five minutes. <clears throat> sure, sure. Short and sweet. So, Go for it. Family Guy was created by Seth Mac- Seth MacFarlane, aka the man himself. Yes. Who apparently hasn't written a single episode of Family Guy since like the first couple seasons, which is surprising. So he's just voiced the characters. Yes. But he brought on the writers. So there's that, I guess. But anyway, it was created by Seth MacFarlane in Cartoon Network, actually, in Mm. like the 90s. Yep. He he can't he uh created this thing life with larry larry was the peter basically he was an old man balding very old. big note from what yeah. I remember. and then there was the dog i forget the dog's name but he was brown he was not brian he was as big as larry hmm. and apparently he was supposed to be a adult oriented cartoon like the simpsons yeah but cartoon network picked it up and was like yeah we need to tone this down so life with larry became a what a cartoon or a cartoon cartoon or something like that which is like a it was like a time slot back in the day that was very it was like a a showcase of like pilots that didn't get to air like uh oh shoot what was it there was a few that you would have recognized i i think, I think uh, oh i think it was spongebob spongebob i think spongebob was on the cartoon network thing i think kind of funny well, I know Adventure Time was on Nickelodeon, that unaired pilot. Yep. And then they passed on it because it sucked, according to them. And then Cartoon Network picked it up and it was a big, huge success. So whatever. But anyway, though. No one liked Life with Larry. It was very, like, dumbed down and very stupid, I guess. Not, and- not the right audience yeah but then fox came along was like you know what we'll pick up your show but you gotta make it like the simpsons because the simpsons is they didn't actually like come out and say it but they gotta be like you gotta have like the average family sitcom with the the dad the mom the two kids the bait the two the two kids, the son, the daughter, the baby, and you can have a dog if you want to. And then that was it. They he kind of created. Yeah. It was kind of created out of that, and they created a whole new pilot for fam, for a uh, fox that became. It was a lot rougher than the pilots for Family Guy that's available, but he made it. They liked it and they showed it on in 1999. Yep. It sounds about right. Indubitably. And surprising enough, also, it was canceled twice. It was. You are correct. And the only reason why it came back was through video sales. Yeah. And Adult Swim. Uh, surprising enough, Cartoon Network came back again to oh. reignite Family Guy. That's hilarious. It is. Oh. It's karma. So, Adult Swim showed Family Guy. Everyone loved it. Like, no one discovered it on Fox. Everyone was all on Adult Swim finding Family Guy. And then Fox was like, okay, people love this. We need to bring it back. So, we, they brought it back. And then they canceled it again. And I guess through video sales and all that, they came back again. And they've stayed for better or for worse. Huh. And 
And yeah. And surprising enough, through each cancellation, it details the rise, the fall, and the slow and painful death of a family mm. guy that we can talk about and discuss. Sure. Starting with the golden age of Family Guy. Season one through season three. Surprising very short-lived unfortunately yes notably so I, different with its uh hand-drawn animation oh yes very, especially in the first two seasons i think the third one they started mixing it a little bit from what i can remember yeah so um, son what's your what's your uh experience with the first three seasons of Family Guy. <laughs> per the banana flavoring effect, mildly in this case, uh, I tend to laugh more at the later seasons. Or like oh, stuff oh. later on. Like the, I guess the, the second era to me is what I think is the funniest stuff that they came out with. That's when I'm like crying my eyes out laughing but <laughs> yeah i mean the so here's the thing it, it's not me that's saying this it's oh no everyone agrees that seasons one through three is kind of the golden age of right. this, or a family guy from a, a plot driven standpoint yes and yeah, the humor is a little bit different and i think that's probably because seth wrote it if I had to guess, uh, it's Seth still wrote there. a few episodes, but not the entire thing, I don't think. They were just starting out. So the first season's a little rough. It's more plot heavy, which I was shocked at and surprised at. I mean, Peter was working at a toy factory. And then got fired. And then went for like a whole season without a job. And then I guess in season four or five, he started working at the brewery and has been there ever since. That's. I can't believe that actually happened. Like, yeah. Like in the first these first few seasons, Peter works in a toy factory. He does with the mustache guy that's apparently like a stereotypical gay person but what whatever we'll sure. get to, we'll, we'll we'll get to that but anyway so then he actually gets fired or the toy factory burns down or something he he loses his job and he's actually oh. out of a out of the job for like a pretty substantial amount of time and he doesn't get he doesn't get like a substantial job until he works in the brewery at like season four oh uh, yeah so after cancellation too ah i think or is it see the end of season three i don't know but it's like very it's a pretty big gap and i'm like what hmm. there's actual lore in the in family guy what the heck it's not a reset every episode? What the heck, huh? Ah, like a continuous plot line. Yeah, it's like it's sort of, yeah. Also, Meg isn't like the punching bag, which yeah. I was like, what? There's an episode in like season one where Peter actually tries his best to help out Meg. I'm like, what the heck? What, what is <laughs> what? What is this show? Changed. Stewie's trying to take over the world and all that type yeah, of thing. That was hilarious. Always got his weapons. Yeah. I mean, this this show is completely different from it, what it, it became. didn't feel quite right when I watched a little bit of it. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, I personally really like it. It's not bad at all. For sure. Yeah. I mean, I like the lore and the lore is pretty good. Also, the jokes, when they hit, they do hit really hard. Season two, I think that, that's 
Yeah. Every every episode, there's like five times I just bust a gut laughing. It, it's yep. that good. Yep. You'll you'll hear it through his wall. Jack out, shutty. But yeah, <laughs> season yeah. good. Season one set a good strong foundation. Yep. Character introduction, all that good yeah. stuff. I mean, the only real, the only real friend that Peter kind of has in the first couple episodes is Quagmire. Yeah, that's true. He Quagmire is like there. And he's when not they have that party. Yeah, he's not like a. It's a bunch of race maniac guys. yet. Yes, that's true. And then later on, he becomes a sex crazy maniac. Right, right. But then Joe moves. There's an episode where Joe moves in, and then he's, he, they find out he's a cripple. And it's like, oh my gosh, they actually not only kept him in the show, but kept him as, like, in a wheelchair the entire rest of the show. Like, he didn't doesn't automa- magically get healed or something. Yeah. It's... Huh. <clears throat> it's pretty... It's pretty awesome, I gotta say. There, there, there's lore. There's lore in this show. There is lore, yes. That is true. Also, the first cutaway gag. Oh, it's yeah. It's kind of... Uh, kind of points to where the show kind of was going to be taken. It's about... Skinny Hitler. I don't know if I can even say it on YouTube. Oh, it's yeah. That was the very first cutaway. You're right. Yeah. I'm a strong, <laughs> strong Jewish person. And yeah, it, it's a. Uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully I don't get flagged. Oh, uh, you're right. Don't, you're don't, right. Let's let's not say that <sighs> again. But yeah, it, it's. Uh, yeah, the stashed one himself. The 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 not good person, the, the most evil man th- to ever yep. live in the modern world, basically. But yeah. Anyway, though, there's there's like five cutaway gags, and they're each just absolutely awesome. I yes. mean, yeah. I mean, Peter does random kooky, crazy things, but he always still has the love for his family, which I gotta say pretty freaking sweet he's more of like a to me he he's he reminds me more of homer simpson it's and probably not, because he is homer simpson yeah, yeah essentially and not quite like the peter griffin that he ultimately developed into for the majority of the show yeah one thing i noticed and then brian and peter's relationship isn't oh, that yeah. fascinating yeah that, it is they're they, they so, were more friends in they were more friends in these few seasons it's than crazy. they've ever been. I mean, I don't this past season, I don't think they even shared a scene together. Yeah. But yeah. in these early seasons, they're always together. Oh yeah. It's yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's shocking. And they're it's, actually good together. They are. I mean, Stewie well. and Stewie and Brian are pretty good too, but oh yeah, of course. But Peter and Gr- Peter and uh, Brian, they're pretty yeah, they're pretty dope too. I mean, Brian's like the voice of reason. He's not like yeah, what he became. We'll talk <laughs> about him. <laughs> Lois yeah. Lois is also a uh, voice of reason. She's not like a really a stuck up bitch or anything like that. Her voice was a little different. I can't I mean, she, remember if it was a different voice actress or not. No, though. it wasn't. She was a lot more calming. Ah, okay. A lot less grating. Yeah. Her tone of voice changed. but it, The inflections got different. She taught piano? She did. Yeah, and... Uh, what else? I mean... Uh, Addie Tanager exists. Not... not, not not that yet. What's or, the uh, season one? But yeah, who's or the seasons. who's the yellow haired kid that's voiced by Seth Green again? Who who's he? Yellow haired kid. 
it's you mean you talking about Tom Tucker's son with the no, upside? I'm talking I'm talking about the fat kid that's Peter's that? son. Chris. Oh, Chris. Yeah, they're. <laughs> I had to think hard about it because it was so like obviously you know there's Chris. But no, that was. I... <laughs> I forgot who he was because he's kind of absent from this entire show. He's kind of like just the bumbling idiot. He acts like a five-year-old, but he's like 15 or something like that. His voice was different also in the early Yeah, season. that was voice. Like this, you that know. voice was a lot more grating. Yeah. Meg's yeah. voice, that she was different. That, she I was more of a teenage girl. As Mila or Mila, however you say it, Kunis was. Mila Kunis. Yeah. Mila was younger herself. Yeah, but and, she didn't voice her in the first couple of seasons. She voiced her in like halfway through season two, I think. Hmm. Definitely in season three. That's when they made the transition. Ah, okay. So yeah, that's right. I read that somewhere. So. Yeah, you get version one of May. Yeah, and I found this, uh, this, what is it? I found this uh, theory by Teenrific Tariq, this YouTuber Teenrific Tariq. If you guys want to follow his channel, it's a great channel anyway, though. Yeah. He says that the show, what is Family Guy about? And in these first few seasons, it seems like it's about this guy who watches too much TV trying to raise a family. And hmm. I got to say, he was pretty on point there. I mean, is, yeah, if you think about it, that is sort of what takes place. Yeah. Huh. And then... But the humor, though, I mean, the humor takes a little bit to get going. But once it does, it does not let up. Yes. It's Jump cuts. Bit. Yes. Like editing, just beautiful. Mm. Peak family guy. Yep. Uh, who watched to play uh, Drake the Beer? Notice the lack of giggity. Uh, well, but he gets giggity later. Oh, yeah. And back in the early seasons, he was always like, Oh, know that? Yeah, that too. He doesn't. He doesn't <laughs> do like he does in the early seasons. At least <sighs> good stuff. Yeah, good. And Patty Tanager. Patty Tanager does make his appearance in this. And visits, I think I don't think he ever existed outside of this first era. Yeah, because apparently Seth did not like it. I don't know why, because he's, he's one of the funniest characters with his sp spray it, don't say it speech. And his, uh, Big yeah, whoop. Want to fight about it? You the, you the fat kid's father. The, cool, the Kool-Aid guy jumping through the yeah. wall yep. first time. Oh, the chicken fights that, were, that was actually funny. The origin of Ernie the Giant Chicken. I think uh, the mom, mom, mummy, mummy thing came from this era. Oh, season three, if it was, but yeah. Yeah. And then the. Ah! 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 Yeah. That Good. thing, too. I remember seeing that episode. Yes. That was. Definitely a thing when I was, or I guess we both were in our uh, middle school years. Quite, yes. So, and, uh, huh. and, uh, yeah, Quality Family Guy is actually a great show. The trilogy of Perfect Family Guy is it, right here. Fam season one through season three. It's good stuff. You it can't is. go wrong. I mean, you can't go wrong with the overwhelming majority of it, but we'll see a few bits where it stumbles a little bit. 
And now we go to the what I like to call the Silver Age of Family Guy. I'll call it the most hilarious age because this is where I laugh at stuff the most. Yeah, this is where they started. They really got the humor to help. They did not care about plot whatsoever. And they yeah. only cared about telling good jokes. And I got to say, you know, it really if they're going to do that, fine. You know, whatever. For sure. But I would suggest doing that at the beginning because it was kind of rough going into going into this. Back into the show from season three to four when they started. Yeah, it must have been a shift. If you watched it as it came out, yeah, it was kind of there. There's a there's some whiplash, but still, it's pretty good. I mean, my favorite episode in this entire series happens in this age where I'm going to say it's season four till when they went completely digital. Let me look that up while you talk about your experience with this Silver Age son. Yes, so let's see. We got the classics. I think the majority of the stuff that I quote minus Patty Tanager came from this era, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. I don't know the exact dates. Uh, but I know when I, especially if I'm stumbling upon hilarious clips on like a YouTube compilation, it's usually from this era, like the, let's see the, um, what's a good one. I'm pretty sure Dennis is from this era. If I'm not mistaken. We got... Uh, definitely Dan Rather is from this era, for sure. It just comes out of the blue. Good evening, I am Dan Rather, and tonight on CBS News, <laughs> it just keeps going on, sort of my something about 9-11, because that's a thing for family guy, uh, squatters. And then he goes in the freaking tea kettle mode. The, the, the producer gets to come move him over like a tea kettle on the stove. He said, like, steam coming out of his ear. <laughs> so, oh, that's just good. We're going to say stuff like that. So we're going to say season four to season nine, and Dennis came into season 12. Okay, so Dennis is the next chunk. Then. Yes. Rather than uh, this chunk, though. Yes, but this is where it gets crazy. Yes. Like, the jokes keep on flying. There's a... I mean, this is where... Peter just obliterates Meg. Yep. yep. That's where everyone just does not care. Yep. Shut up, Meg, in a nutshell. Yeah. Everyone does not care about plots or anything. Chris becomes a, like, like, masturbates to death and all that or whatever. And gets weed and all that type of thing. He's still an idiot. But, yeah. Then we get more, uh. We get more characters, like, uh... Doesn't Consuela appear in this era? Yes. I thought. <laughs> yes. Consuela. That's, uh... And, uh... uh no, the, 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 per- the old pervert that wants Chris. Yes. Herbert. Yes. Herbert, yeah. Herbert makes his appearance here. Yes, he's one of the funniest characters, too. Uh, this is when they just went balls to the wall and just did not care. And oh. here's the thing. And uh, 
Yeah, this is when Brian starts to become more uh, like Stewie's buddy. Stewie's buddy and more pompous. More of the uh, the writer, the writer, if you will, the liberal, if you will. Yes, that's that everyone that's hates too. You can ask Quagmire, and he'll yeah. He'll Quag- Quagmire starts to hate him too, and all that. They have a rivalry. Yeah, this is where, but yeah, this is where they go far above and beyond anything. I think this is also when uh, their Star Wars trilogy came out as well. It would have to be because Consuela is in it. Well, yeah, but it could go. Yeah, it is. Season six, episode one, Blue Harvest. That's the first one. So, yeah, that's when it starts. Right, season right. four to season nine. And yeah, that's. Those were good the jokes. The jokes are great. This is this is the era that my favorite episode of Family Guy is actually in. And it's, it's Peter the, and the Washer. Is it that one? No, that's one of my favorite oh. jokes. You want when you just. Oh, ah. he goes. He's just literally. You know, I sit in the want. You know, I sit on the washer. Oh. Lo- Lois is just doing the dry, putting the stuff out of the dryer, and he's just <laughs> like, ignoring Peter. <laughs> he's uh, casually ignoring Peter, but at the same time, he's he's. You could say it's an innuendo for why, yeah, the, uh, the women folk would want to sit on the washer. We'll, we'll leave it at that. Yeah, we're 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 not going to dive into that, that. Apparently, yeah. Uh, but anyway, my favorite episode is the Red Bull episode where, oh which, yeah, That's a, where the beginning the beginning half is so just unquenchably hilarious. Everything just hits for me, and I love it. I, I Peter oh, drinks yeah. Red Bull, and everything just happens the way you think it will happen. And at the end, it you see some lore with oh, yeah. Ryan, like being a good friend to Peter and trying to give up his liver so he can, or kidney or something, so he can, oh yeah, can live and all that. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's actually nice. And lore, the lore, the lore is back. The lore has returned for yes. at least for them. <laughs> Brian's actually a nice guy and he's not a ass. That's true. Greatness. I do believe the family guy. Uh, yes, I, I got to mention it. Pinball machine came out during this era. Of course, um, you have to say that. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. It's fun. It's family guy plus pinball. It's a stern table. It, well, that's good at least. It, 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 that means, do, need I say more? It's it's just a it's a win for everyone involved, and I will own one someday. Uh, there was a video game I think that came out on the like PS2, Xbox. Maybe that was during the first three seasons but yeah somewhere in there there was actually a console game but i couldn't tell you much about it because i've never played it but i think it's decent so if you played it in the comments what did you think and uh yeah so there is a uh I guess this is also where we can talk about the controversy surrounding Family Guy. Not super big, but it's like not like, you know, world shattering bad, but it's like. Reasons as to why things kind of happen in the future. Oh, I see. Like the. okay, yeah. So. There was an episode of South Park. So here's the thing. South Park. Is basically Family Guy. In my opinion, it's better. Probably. I still like Family Guy, but South Park, I still think, is written better. 
well, yeah, it, I will say South Park, if, if you're wanting a better story plot line aspect, and you know, I mean, South they don't even have, I mean, there's not like a lot of plot in the first 20 seasons. Only after season 20 do they get like, you know, plot heavy, but like serialized and all that. But anyway, yes. So, still like Family Guy. South Park, I think it's a little bit better, in my opinion. Anyway, though, there's this episode of South Park that came out. And th- here's the thing. South Park, a little tangent here. South Park yeah, sometimes releases episodes that has real-world consequences. Like, oh. for instance, you know the whole uh, ginger hate like gingers have no souls and all that type of yeah, thing. The, the the kid was like, gingers had souls, man. That, that kid, yeah. That yeah. originated from South Park. Wait, wait. It, it wasn't the other way around. That kid no. on YouTube was inspired by South Park to do that. Yes. Oh, okay, yeah, because that's right. There's something about the ginger kids on South Park. I remember that now. Yeah, Cartman had a thing. Cartman the fat kid had a thing about gingers having no souls and all that. That's wrong, but, you know, whatever. Anyway, though, that's just an example of the real-world consequences that they have sometimes. You know what? I do believe then they parodied the kid on YouTube on South Park. So. They probably did. <laughs> goes but anyway, back. yeah. Anyway, though, uh, they so they created this. They created an episode of South Park, where apparently Matt Stone and Trey Parker had been getting a lot of like letters or whatever i don't know what happened in 2006 but they got a lot of like talk about how they compared people compared their show south park to family guy and apparently trey parker matt stone hates family guy like a lot and they do not like being compared to that so they made an episode a family guy About how it's all just random. It's random humor, random stuff. It's just the most stupid thing. You think that's bad? (laughs) The the animation of Peter's face. Yeah. He's kind of droopy looking with tanners in it. I don't know why. You You think think that's bad? You think that's bad? Oh, boy. Anyway, though. That kind of caused the people between South Park and Family Guy to kind of not really like each other. And that will. And the uh, it was kind of cool to hate Family Guy now because South Park said so. Ah, I see. So once. So after. The reason why I make this like the digital once Family Guy went digital and all that, yeah, was because that's when they started to, I guess, go less and less of the like cutaway gags, and yeah. more and more into just slowly but surely going into the lore and going into more like they started to become like South Park, except yeah. the writers are not. I'm going to say it. The writers are not as <sighs> talented as Trey Park and Matt Stone. I'm sorry. Yeah, in that sense. There's like this, that. And this is what we call the Bronze Age, which is still not bad, to be honest. What? It's still not bad, though. <laughs> Some. There, there are parts where it's like. There's, reason, there's the reason why I'm going to call this the Bronze Age, yep. which is season. I guess seasons, what was it, 10 through um, uh, 18, I guess. I'll take your word for it. Hopefully he's right for here, this. Here, hang on. I'm going to. 
Hey, God. I'll be back from the cog. I'm going to look this up real fast. Adam West High School. Season 17. Okay, so season... That's where that was headed. Yeah, I, season 17. We'll, we'll talk about that later, but... We will. Oh, I yes. Will. Yes, we will. But anyway, <laughs> season 10 through 17... Yeah. ...is what I like to call the Bronze Age, which, or, yes, or, there are good points in Family Guy still. Dennis. But there are some Sample. that are so bad that, that it's th- there's a reason why it's called the Bronze Age. And you're just like, it's not that it's like, oh, this is cancerous. Like I can't take it. No, it's just like, not yet. It's a little laughing, but it's just like uh, it's just kind of boring. Not yet. So there's this episode, not yet. Where Quagmire's sister. Is in an abusive relationship. Quagmire's sister. Yeah, and it's played for jokes, and it is so bad. I don't know if I remember that one. It's in this. It's in this series. It's in. It's in this pocket of Family Guy episodes, and it's so bad and so just disheartening that oh. they try to do South Park, right? They try to be like, "Oh, hey, we're edgy and we're cool too." Hey, look. Quagmire's sister gets a his abusive relationship. They try to have commentary as well, and it does not work. Ah. Uh. They they try to have a message as well, and it just does not. That's not Family Guy. No, it's not. But it's, they tried, and they're trying to be like South Park. It sounds like it yeah, quite work. Yeah, I mean, there's still some hilarious episodes in here Dennis. but still it's kind of looked at weirdly today like i think this is this might it might be this pocket or another pocket or this or the gold like the silver age pocket i can't remember but yeah quagmire's father transitions and becomes a transgender yeah. woman at some point it was kind of random, but I guess it's funny in an ironic sense because of Quagmire being himself and t- his dad. <laughs> it was like kind of like the anti Quag, even though he is a Quagmire, but y- you know what I mean. Oh, uh, it's season eight, so it's in the Silver Age. But yeah, so yeah, this is, yeah, it was also when it kind of went a little, started to go a little downhill at the little end of the Silver Age, too, where they kind of made fun of the transgender community, and that's not really all that funny. Not woke. Not, and it's not really that funny either. Yeah. Um, it was just, it was just transgender jokes and not funny transgender jokes either. It was kind of. You didn't do it in a way that was, that you could laugh. It was, I guess. Just like, okay, but why? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And sure. it was just kind of like stuff like that. It was just very preachy. And they tried to do very dark things that just did not land. Is this when and- Ryan got hit by the car? Oh, that later. I completely forgot about that. Oh, yeah. But I that comes with its own hilarious thing, and another thing that I quote from sometimes. No, this is not. We're we'll get into that. Oh, that's another okay. That that's good and bad at the same time. It's it's kind of like both. But yeah, uh, I guess stuff kind of like that, but maybe not as good as that even. Yeah, I mean, there is some good episodes in this se- in this block still. Like, there's still some things that I find hilarious. Oh yeah, I me too. I mean, like, I mean, I think yeah, this is this is the block where uh, Dennis Ferrigna comes in. Yeah, and that alone is legendary, and you know, just hilarious. And I, I just. 
I, I can never say anything bad about that episode. You know, do it for Dennis. Indeed. Indeed. But, uh, and the cat, of course. Uh, yeah. But with and, that being said, uh, I guess you could say this is where they started really. Yeah, I guess they did get a little bit more edgy with their jokes. And they uh, now, you know, I guess depending on how you feel about certain subjects. And now, it's, like that, here, here's the thing. They oh. didn't. All their jokes had some edge to it like there's this one joke where kim kardashian like they did a cutaway gag where kim kardashian's like oh there's a black penis i didn't i didn't fondle or whatever oh, oh, i was oh, like yeah. black ball went to waste <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's right and, and i gotta say i hate the kardashians it's hilarious i'm oh, sorry but too funny but there's <laughs> other so they don't they didn't have they did not not have edge well yes but then they started to become preachy and they started to become not funny <laughs> preachy in what way though i don't know if i picked up on that so the whole reason was, I'll, I'll use this example again so sure. the uh the episode where Quagmire's sister is in an abusive relationship. Yes. They're trying to say abusive relationships are bad. You should, when you're in an abusive relationship, you should get out of it or whatever, right? But they don't tell oh. you how. Oh, okay. They tell a ton of jokes that are just terrible and not funny and be just kind of mean spirited. To the Very point well. where you're kind of like, I'm not laughing. I'm actually kind of cringing at every joke. Ah, but they, we'll, they but we'll get into the cringe. Oh, we'll get into the cringe later. Ah, but anyway, mm-hmm. yeah, that's that's kind of the Bronze Age. It's the Bronze Age. It did give us Dennis, though. It did, and that is epic. And now, the Dark Age. Gotcha. The age we're currently in. Which still isn't necessarily that bad. Because, oh, family guy. It yeah. definitely has some moments where it's like the saint what it once was. But Maybe. I, 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 I've, I'll, I'll tell you, I have. I am watching every episode of Family Guy still. I, this entire, so we're going from uh, season 17 onward. Yeah. I've seen the most recent season from beginning to end, and I may have laughed maybe twice. It's that bad. Oh. This is the one, this is the, this is the section where the reason why I said 17 onwards, because 17 is where Adam West High, like their James Woods High School becomes Adam West High School. Right, right. Which, which yes, Adam West died. They're paying they, tribute to him. It's fine. I saw them, but it was kind of boring. As it episode. is. It's not funny. And they're trying yeah. to put lore back into... Family Guy, but a little you too can't. Old. But after like fifteen seasons of not having lore, it's mm. not gonna work. You can't do that. At least not like that forcefully. Yeah, you gotta like yeah. lean us back into it a little bit. Yeah, if you're even. Gonna and also, go. they got Sam Elliott as the okay. new. That is not a bad thing. I laugh and quote from him all the time. Yes. On paper, it's not that bad, but they don't use their Sam Elliott that well. And I'm kind of disappointed. I, 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 they, they do. Sometimes they do. do. 
eighty percent of the time they don't, and I'm just a lot of the times it's just West. It's just the uh, cowboy jokes and all that crap. I'm just like, listen, I usually laugh at all of them. Do you? Yes. Uh, Per the banana flavoring effect. I guess the banana flavoring effect is an effect. Yeah, I I mean, uh, even seeing it, I could have told you it was the thing where you would have been. You know, back with braces, like <laughs> that's not funny. Yeah, I, would I mean, like, <laughs> but I do laugh sometimes at that. I mean, sometimes they, it does work, but then there's other times that they do the same thing, and I'm like, it, it didn't land it well. It didn't land for me. Well, I should say, okay. This is also the part. This is also the uh, time where. Brian got hit by a car. Which, which was kind of dark. Uh, uh, yeah. plans. It did and give us something hilarious as an outcome of this with the you know, Vinny the dog. Yeah, you know, uh, the wise guy. The dog, eh? you know, uh, tell yeah. you On paper, again, Vinny's hilarious. He was hilarious with a lot of the things he said. Yeah. With his freaking... <laughs> Out of context, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. But uh, here's the thing, though. They treat Brian's death. They treat it yeah. as a joke. And this is one of the heart... Yeah. He used to be one of the heart, the heart and soul of Family Guy. Yeah. And a lot of people's favorite character. And they treat it as like a joke. And it's not funny. Like literally literally after he, literally after he gets run over, a squirrel comes and spits on him and says, "Serves you right," and then runs away. And I'm like, "No, that's dark. That's not. That's a joke. They're trying to work, and it's not funny." Once again, I probably did laugh at least a little bit at that for banana flavoring effect. There's gonna be. A massive banana flavoring effect for the rest of this episode of the podcast. Probably, yeah, but it's, it's not definitely, but but here here's the thing: I laugh at Family Guy, right? All I the do. older stuff I love, but it's just now that's just. I don't think it's that it's bad. Kind of, it's mucky. It's cloudy. Let me just get this out of the way. Fine. So, what? I said fine. Yeah, but anyway. Overall, I mean, here's the thing. Overall, I'll say that this... I mean, they're, eventually they brought him back after a couple episodes. Oh, yeah. With, with Vinny as the replacement, but... It's... It was just kind of weird. And they're it's starting just- to do less and less cutaway gags. There's a whole episode where Peter and Lois travel into the cutaway gags, which that's kind of interesting on paper. It is, but they didn't execute it so well. Yeah, it, after wow. like a little bit of giggling with the cutaway gag, then they just be like, then they're just like, oh, how are we going to get out of here, Peter? I don't know. Huh. I don't know. Stuff like that, you know, it's just not funny. It's like, all right, uh, what's next? <laughs> yeah. Uh, hello. <laughs> and at, and it's also during this that they started. To, I mean, they started before, but you really notice it now where they just halt on the cutaway gags. There's like entire episodes that don't even have cutaway gags in it. Oh, really? you yeah, you don't even get a cutaway. There's like a three episode gap where you don't get a cutaway gag for like three episodes. That I will uh, dismiss the banana flavoring effect and we'll call it the. I, the only thing I can even think of is the gluten free Oreos effect or no, no, yeah, the, the popcorn effect. Yeah, there you go. The popcorn effect. Uh the gluten-free oatmeal raisin cookie effect that costs a lot of money. Yeah. Also, because I agree. My last, my last little thing here. Yeah. My last real big critique 
Yeah. This was also when the Me Too movement started happening, right? You are correct. And I, I, I don't have any fault with the Me Too movement, okay? They need, I mean, these idiots need to be brought to justice. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. These, these poor, innocent women and men need to voice their, have their voices heard and all that, but... Oh, yeah, well, yeah. Because of the Me Too movement... It, it was. I don't think it was because necessarily, not because like, of it, directly, but it was. It brought it, on this initiated and brought it on basically. Quagmire, it, it got, yeah. Quagmire has is not a womanizer anymore, and is oh. now just like a grandfather. Basically, he's just like a chill dude. Like the he's now the voice of reason for this show. Sometimes that that in itself is funny though because it's Quagmire being like that. So yeah, but they're trying to completely change his character. Yeah. If you don't see stuff like that, you don't see stuff like in the past that he used to do. Then it's yeah, not, it, it loses not, the funniness. That's true. That is true. Yeah, that's he's not. Just, he's a cat true. mom basically, and it's not I'm, that. Oh funny. yeah, that is true. Now. Am I going to say that necessarily everything Quagmire's done is 100% hilarious? No. There, there's times when they went a little too far in a few places, like uh, doing like him trying to have sex with underage girls and all that. I don't really appreciate that or like that, but well, a lot of times Quagmire was funny, and yep. this was a like, type of show that was went there and just didn't pack any punches and was just there to make you laugh. Right, right. They basically built this character to be a pervert. But now they have to take the pervert out of the pervert. What does that leave the pervert? A, a shell. It's He's, he's nothing. Kind of there. He's yeah, nothing. I see what you mean. He's not, not the same quagmire, you know, and I will say that uh, that's unfortunate. I didn't really know that. Um, I'll keep that in mind if I ever see more of the new stuff. Uh, I still think it's overall funny. You know, I don't sit down. So there, are, like, there are a few episodes that get a chuckle out of me every once in a while. But it's fewer and farther between for me, at least. It's, it's less than it once was. But yeah. It's a hollow shell of what it used to be, unfortunately. Yeah, it's, and it's mostly, and I, I, I gotta say, I think it's mostly because of that South Park episode. Because a lot of people were like, "Family Guy sucks. It's not funny," but it actually was funny. And then they made it unfunny. Then they made it unfunny. Oh. Uh. That and I, I kind of wonder, like you were kind of hinting at this as well. Uh, I think we can word it this way to make it more fair. Uh, the, you know, generation change that kind of took place over the last few decades, you know, that kind of, for 20 years, I should say, uh, that in itself, I think, influenced indirectly this shift that we're seeing where maybe it's almost trying to be more PC, as you like to say, in some areas, but they do. Yeah, that's it, what I'm saying. And it doesn't work, though. Cause yeah, that's what I'm saying. It is. It's supposed it's to not be funny. Like, not PC at all. Yeah, I mean, South Park... Yes. Here's yeah. the thing. South Park, South Park's not PC at all. And it knows it. It, it commits they to it. Have a PC principle because they know they're not PC. Yeah. <laughs> it does it's not PC. It knows it. it a, but a, a strong it, independent woman. <laughs> yeah, it, it trashes everybody and everything. Family they, Guy used to be like that, but it didn't have but here's the thing. South Park has like a a core message for 
why they were making fun of what they're making fun of. Family Guy doesn't. It's just a joke. It's just jokes. Just and usually when they try to have a message, all in good fun. It, but yeah, when they the when, it, don't work. when they try to have a message, it doesn't work. And when they try to be South Park, it doesn't work. It's not South Park, you know. It's I mean, it, it literally is not South Park. Yeah, it's I mean, Family Guy. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Yeah, uh, there was another thing that I wanted to say. I forgot about the Dark Age. It's about Family Guy as a whole, I think. Oh. Well, I can say it's. I've definitely noticed some shifts. Uh, some for better, some for worse. I will also again say I don't think the Dark Age is as dark as maybe we, you're. Think it is, but it's subjective, of course. It is oh, subjective. Okay. So, ah, yes. I just what wanted to mention that they also, there was also a spinoff of Family Guy called The Cleveland Show oh, that yeah. happened during the Bronze Age, I think. Ah. Something like that. Yeah. For four seasons. It was supposed to be like the Jeffersons or. Good, good times or something like that. It's like supposed to be like a African or African American like, yeah, yeah, show, a comedy show. Right. The thing is, though, it was written by white people, so right. it didn't quite work. Every, I mean, ah. good times. The Jeffersons were also written by white people, but they had input from. The African American community, right, and a few African American creator writers were on these shows. Right, like, the entire writing staff of the Cleveland show was white. Ah, okay, so, so they didn't really get it, and they, it wasn't they can't relate. You know, just by nature, and maybe it didn't translate as well. I'll say, I don't think I've really seen much of the Cleveland show. I may have seen some YouTube snippets here and there. It wasn't like so awful that I couldn't take it or anything, but I mean, it's... I know it didn't do well uh, overall. Like, it wasn't a hit. Yeah, it, it was ran for like four seasons and then they just brought him back, brought Cleveland back to Family Guy. If this isn't working. That was probably for the best. I like having... Uh, Cleveland as a character he he adds this uh, extra dynamic to the little friend group that they have at the drunken clam indeed indeed everywhere you know I mean who else is gonna ride in the bathtub on the roof like no 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 no, no, no. you know that, that, that's that's amazing yeah and I mean <sighs> Yeah, the Cleveland show, I've seen the entire series and I'm sure. I'm sure. it did make me laugh. Did it? OK, cool. Not as much as Family Guy. But it did make me laugh. Did it? There, make you there's laugh? a lot of issues with it. I'm sure. Uh, here's what I'm curious about. Did it? Did you find it funnier than the Dark Age of Family Guy, though? <sighs> or is it like on par? I would say it's on par. Really? Wow. You, oh. yeah. Hmm. yeah. I don't know. You might like it. Banana flavoring effect, but maybe there's no I don't think there's there are very limited cutaways. OK. I don't remember. I don't remember there being cutaways. Also, so, they live next to a bear family, which I don't. I, I don't understand the joke. Oh there. yeah, that's right. The the you know what? Maybe this is this is a little far fetched. Maybe I'm I'm taking the uh the Phantom Menace approach here of trying to explain. Of you liking Phantom Menace? Well, it's not or not 
no, not Phantom Menace. Uh, Attack of the Clones. Of you Wait. liking Attack of the Clones? I did not like it, actually. It was the, <laughs> one of the dullest things I've seen in a long time. Uh, George! Exactly. It, it's like, point being, I. it's like explaining plot points in that film where nothing makes sense and you're ha- like making stuff up. Maybe this is one of those moments. Could it yeah. be? Could it be? Because he is Cleveland and no, never mind. I, I totally screwed that up in my head. <laughs> oh my god. I, dun, wow. dun, 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 hey! Uh, at freaking cog. I'm sorry. Hitch my new home away from home. Anyway, though. Or the cog, not the cleave. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Cleveland show is not mind. funny. They, <laughs> I mean, Seth has done other things other than Family Guy. He's done American Dad, which he did. You will say it has no cutaways, but no, it, it still is. It's it's hilarious. They can do a show without cutaways and still be hilarious. My it, gosh. Not like Family Guy funny, but it's definitely got funny. It's not Family uh, Listen, is it like like belly busting laughs like every minute? No, but it's still good. It's got I'd still it's say, got for sure. I'd still say it's really good. Yeah, yeah, good show. It's it's got some dyna- got some nice family dynamics that I like. He also directed Ted, the Ted and movie, Ted. which I really like. Yes. Basically, Family Guy. Right. Smashing Mark Wahlberg as Peter and the bear is like Brian. It's basically yeah. that. They he directed a million ways to die in the West. That was really bad. Ted 2, which wasn't as bad, but wasn't on par with Ted 1. Yeah. He's also made The Orville, which is basically his version of Star Trek. And that's a pretty decent show. And it's funny. And it's... that. Yeah. It's actually a really decent show. It's still going today. But anyway, what can we say about Family Guy? Family Guy's great when it wants to be. Family Guy's great when it wants to be. It's hilarious when it wants to be. It just needs to want to be good. Yes. Then it will be good. Yes. Like, we have this amazing thing as, you know, poking fun at how generically Western uh, Sam Elliott is. Because we always know he's the the cowboy figure. You're like, yes. You know what it means to drive a Dodge Ram pickup. You know, just you know something like that. And I think him as Wild West has a lot of potential if they can drive that in the right direction. Because when they land that correctly, it's pretty damn funny. Yeah, <laughs> he does yeah. make a smell at the sound of the chow bell. I will <laughs> say, I'll say this though. You know, but. Adam West Adam West in Family Guy worked because he was a bumbling idiot and you didn't think that Adam West was a bumbling idiot in real life but Adam West Ah. in the show was a bumbling idiot Wild West is just a western cliche and does everything western and there's no surprises or anything that's my fault with it but that's it does, uh, you know, remove the 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 irony and the you know the guy that was Batman at one point, uh, one of the most famous Batman. That that bat that man was Batman. You know, you know. Uh, then he's over here like. 
nobody messes with Adam Wee. You know, just random crap like that. The Wild yeah. West, you know, hilarious, but you don't have that. Uh, like you're saying, that that's true. The unexpectedness is not there. Not that I'm annoyed by it, but that is a very good thing to point out. I didn't really think about that. You know, that's true. I can see, you know, if you're watching all the episodes or you're a really diehard fan of it, how that could be kind of disappointing. I still yeah. like it. It's a great character. But anyway. <laughs> yeah. Family Guy is great when it wants to be. It is. It can't be good when it wants to be. It just has to be. Yes. Go back to poking fun at everything. Go back to yes, like the jokes, everything like that. Cutaways. That's what makes Family Guy Family Guy. The cutaway gags, the jokes. Exactly. You you do you necessarily have to go as far as you did. Like with Quagmire wanting to do stuff with underage girls? No, don't, please. But I, yeah, maybe that was a little far. But, you know, you can still. It, it can work. Go far, you know, you can still be. It, it, do it, maybe, jokes. Maybe not. You know, you still do cutaway it, jokes, still do gags. Think- Family Guy, what we think Family Guy as being, you know? Yeah, I mean... The people want to see... Here's the thing. The fans love the cutaway gags. You take that away, you not only alienate the people that hate the show already, but you alienate your fans, so no one wants to watch it. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, exactly. So, Uh, anyway. You have a point there for sure. Um, anyway, I think you're, you're that, but final thoughts, son. Final thoughts. Uh, despite some of its more recent, uh, although I would say minor, they're still noteworthy uh, uh, stumblings in the darker days, you know, overall. And that's including the darker days of the show. I still think it's pretty good. Um, were some seasons better than others, definitely. But I do think even in the worst season that they ever produced, it's still probably going to have something that you're, there will be at least one point where you're going to just start dying laughing about something totally absurd. Because that is what Family Guy is about in a nutshell. Amen, amen. Indeed. Amen. All right, and that's it for this episode of D Podcast, everybody. Thanks for joining us on this romantic occasion. Follow us on follow us on YouTube. Click that subscribe button, like, comment, more content come your way, and hey, bell for uh, notifications, of course. Indeed, and take care, guys. Da-da-da-da.